See, that will work. That's strange. This should work as well, but it's not working. So we're gonna use the media mod, so we're gonna have that really bassy voice again. But it is what it is. All right, let me get into the, to the chat. Uh, wait, I gotta do one Twitch thing real quick because I think that is set the music. We don't want that. in here hold up twitch so salute to you um dj name best in the building abdul what's going on uh sway abdullah andreas or andras my bad did that before i don't know why i keep saying andreas that's not your name and uh cool or cow let me quickly go on to uh twitch make sure i set that to just chatting because i think right now it's still set to uh to music and this is not music <laughs> all right all right what's going on y'all it's wednesday it's uh 7 10 p.m here in amsterdam this is the share the knowledge live q a for djs uh broadcasting from home not the studio this time which means i won't have the time limitation because i won't have to run home for our curfew uh i don't know if i'm gonna make it crazy long but at least i don't have to worry about that last week i had to stop the stream uh while we were having fun but i had to stop the stream in order to get home uh, because of our curfew. All right, Twitch, Twitch, Twitch. Security token. Let me just fix that. It's not the most important thing. I just don't like people on Twitch to see music and see me in the music category when today is just not about music. So I just want to change that in Twitch uh, on Twitch real quick. Accept, accept. Haven't I used this browser before? That's weird. Doesn't matter. Creator dashboard. So let me just fix this one thing and then uh, then I'll stick to the chat. Today I'm gonna to try to keep up with the chat. Normally I take a long time to do my answers and then uh, I get way behind. But I'm not gonna rush any answers if I feel I need more time to explain it though. All right, so that's updated. Uh, the stream is up, so that's it. I'm just gonna go into the chat right now. Uchiha, what's going on? Salute to you. And Philip Rangus in the building, yellow. DJ Sense, what's up? DJ Waves, what's going on? All right, it's cool. Got you. Did you see the limited edition S70 from A-Track uh, during the Goldie Awards? Uh, no, I haven't seen that yet. I have not seen that yet. Uh, but S70, so I guess you, uh, S7, I presume you're talking about, right? I assume that's what you're talking about. You got DJ T Diesel in the building and Rich Nice. What we talking about today, eh? Anything DJ related goes. Uh, so y'all can just do the, the, the questions. Um, Swim wants to know what happened on Monday on Mixcloud. Uh, I don't know what happened on Monday. What happened? Red Beard, what's good? Do you feel it's necessary to have two external hard drives as a backup? Mm, um, so you mean like identical uh, hard drives? Because in my uh, in my opinion, the backup is uh, yes, 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 yes. So for instance, I have files on my computer. 
I have an external. So for instance, right now I'm at home. I have an external here. This is for just um, what's called personal, but this has like all of my documents, all of my uh, personal photos and videos and my music collection that's on this right here. This is like an eight terabyte hard drive. I have an identical one at the studio right now. So this is an external backup, but I have a backup of this backup. And then I also do cloud storage to have uh, a backup online as well. You, you, you can't have enough backups. I mean, that's, that's important. You can't have enough backups. Okay, so it was the Rain 70. No, I did not see that one yet. Deepak in the building, salute to you. Uh, dig sample beats, what's going on? Uh, yeah, yeah, let's get into uh, uh, phase the Serato beta. That is a good one. So, I went to the studio today basically for two things. I went there to get my ATA Mini Pro so I could stream from the house today but have a wired internet connection because last time, last two times, I was at home. We had mad issues with the Wi-Fi. I did not want to go through that. So I'm on a wired connection. So that safety is uh, is very, very nice to have. But the second reason I went to the studio is to install Serato, the beta version, update my phase and test phase. Didn't get to do it. I updated Serato. I downloaded the new, um, what's it called? The, 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 the new um, phase manager, because you need the new phase manager to update your phase transmitter and receiver to six. If you have phase manager, but you haven't gotten the latest version, then you won't see the update uh, option. So I downloaded it and connected phase. And when I wanted to install the update, to the transmitter and receiver to go to version six. Uh, it would not let me do it. Retry, 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 disconnect, uh, uh, close the software, connect it again, open the software, try it again, and I could not uh, uh, get it to update. So I was pretty mad because I was really looking forward to testing the HID mode with Serato. So for those who don't know what we're talking about, if you're familiar with Phase by NWM, Phase is um, basically a wireless solution to use a DVS, a digital vinyl system. So to control the music in your DJ software with control vinyl. Now in the past you had to use vinyl and you had to use actual needles on the turntables to read the signal on the vinyl. With Phase, you just put the Phase transmitters onto your vinyl and they translate the movement to the receiver. Now, I really, really wanted to uh, try this update because with the latest update, you don't even have to connect RCA cables from the phase receiver to your mixer. The only thing you do is you connect the phase receiver to your computer via USB, and then everything works. Uh, so I couldn't get it to update. I uh, restarted the laptop, did that again, could not get it to update. Every time I started the update, the first thing I heard is that the phase receiver would lose the connection. Now, I know sometimes when you do firmware updates, it does that automatically and then reconnects. But in this case, it just said failed, press retry, and after a couple of times, it tells you to unplug uh, uh, and plug it back in. So I cannot tell you anything more about it. All right, let me go back up. Mixmaster G in the building, salute to you. Salute Brian Collimore. Um, so no, I did not get the chance to test the new phase beta version. And I saw someone say, what's beta? Uh, a beta version is basically the version before the official release. So it's a version that brands will actually release to some of the users to test it, but they'll tell you, hey, this is the beta version, so it's not the final version, so some things might not work properly yet, but it's in a far enough stage that they are willing to let you test it. Um, oh yeah, Sven, so I don't know what happened with that on Monday. Like, I think there was just like a temporarily loss of internet. 
because uh, all platforms just lost me for like a minute and then the connection was back. So I don't know. Uh, I honestly didn't check. I thought that Mixcloud also continued after like that minute, but I did not check. Um, so I'm not sure what happened with that, uh, but I was back up after a minute and I played for like another, I don't know how long, hour or something. Um, so yeah, that was it. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, Andres wants to know, can I ask you what, what you personally think about the Pioneer S7? Will you update? Um, I haven't done a full review, but I did do a comparison between the S7 and the S9. And I think if you currently do not own any of the Pioneer scratch mixers for DBS, so if you don't have the S7, S9 or S11, and you're thinking about buying either an S7 or an S9, I would say go for the S7. It's like 300 bucks cheaper. It is more in line with the newest features and it has a couple of things that just work better. Now, if you have an S9, it's only gonna be an upgrade if the uh, the things on the S7 that are quote unquote better are things that you need. So for instance, the phono outputs, the phono preamps in the S7 are better than the ones in the S9. But if you never play real vinyl and you only use DVS, then that's not important for you. Some people prefer to have the S9 because it has better mic control because you have full mic EQ uh, and uh, the S7 doesn't have that. It just has one knob that just does high low. Um, but I feel that there's more advantages to the S7. Now I have the S9. I'm not gonna buy an S7. That's not gonna happen. If I upgrade, the upgrade is gonna be S11. That's the one for me. Um, but yeah, there are clear advantages to the S7, especially when you look at the performance pads, where you can actually have different modes on each channel. With the S9, it's just one mode on every channel. And I know there's ways that you can do some MIDI mapping to change that, but it's not built in. Uh, the scratch bank on the S7. So um, yeah, I, I think that's the best choice. But if you have an S9 and it's working for you and you don't really need those things, then you are good to go with an S9. The S11 is just the one for me. If I get the chance to upgrade, that is gonna be my, uh, my upgrade. Uh, I've been trying to come to the Netherlands for some time now. I want to make a real career of DJing there. Any suggestions for which clubs, venues, events to reach out to for gigs? Uh, not really experienced. Look, all I can say is, but I think that's gonna uh, be the same in a lot of countries. We already have like a ton of DJs over here. So especially if you're not really experienced yet, um, there's gonna be a lot to compete with because there's already a ton of beginner DJs here that also are looking for that chance. And there's, I, I could not give you suggestions for any specific club or venue or event. You would have to do some research about the type of music you play and where in the Netherlands, uh, uh, which clubs and venues actually uh, promote those types of events. Now we're living in an era right now that that's not really possible. You can't really research that because there's no parties going on. So. First, we have to see how things pick up once we're past this pandemic. Once things start to pick up, then you'll have a better vision of what might be possible. And so I, from your um, story here, you mean that you would actually move here, right? Because that would be a thing you have to do. You would have to actually be here uh, in order to um, get to know promoters, uh, venue owners, other DJs, you name it. Do you think every DJ should learn how to use Technics? Um, so Technics or any turntable? Jamal uh, asked that question. Um, do you think every DJ should learn how to use Technics? So I'll, I'll just take that back to turntables. Should every DJ learn how to use turntables? Uh, only if you feel like it. I mean, in, in my opinion, it's an advantage to be able to use 
different equipment. So in my case, I could use turntables, controllers, media players, basically any type of DJ device. So that's to my advantage. If you only know how to play on, for instance, CDJs, um, look, there's not going to be many times here, at least, there's not going to be many times that you'll get booked for a gig and that the only setup they have is turntables. That really doesn't happen anymore. So it's not like you need it. I, f I mean, I love the fact that I, I, I learned on turntables. Uh, it's a different type of feeling. It actually makes you perform better on controllers and other players as well. Um, so it's a plus, but, but I mean, everyone should decide for themselves if they feel that's something they want to add. I know plenty of young DJs who started on controllers and now they feel like, hey, now I want to also try to see how it is to play on turntables. So if you have that feeling, then go for it. Uh, Abdul is using the Numark NS7 II with Serato DJ Pro. Uh, when I only use Serato Video, it uh, works perfect, but when I bring in Mix Emergency, it freezes after a few minutes. At the same time, a Mix Emergency works perfect with other mixers like the Ring 70. Whew. Um, I don't know. could be that the computer maybe can't handle both at the same time. Uh, but you say when you use the Ring 70, you don't have that issue. Ooh. Uh, it would be really hard for me to say what, what the problem could be. Uh, yeah, Vess, I can understand that Mojax was, was positive. I mean, um, I am very positive about phase already. So um, this update is something that, in my opinion, is only going to make things better. Uh, ATM wants to know, what do you think is a fair hourly rate for an average DJ uh, to charge for weddings, four-hour block, top equipment with average skills? I have no idea. I have no clue. Uh, I'm totally not experienced within the the mobile DJ slash wedding DJ world. So uh, I cannot speak on that. On top of that, I think it really depends on where you are, which country you're in, but probably also which region you're in. I can imagine that there's probably going to be different rates in different uh, areas within the country. So I don't know. I mean, there's a couple of people online that are really into like the weddings that could probably tell you more about that. But um, uh, I have no idea. I've done a couple of weddings for my normal fee, uh, not bringing a lot of equipment and everything. So I don't know. Um yeah, everything, uh, everyone who got it up and running is positive about phase HID. I, I can imagine. Yeah. Um, so I have no idea what it was. I'll be back in the studio tomorrow and I'll take a look to see if there's anything happening why, um, why it's not working on my laptop. So what I will do is actually just try it on the studio computer, see if I can run the update there. Uh, because as long as I get those phase uh, transmitters and receivers updated, then it can work on the laptop. I just didn't have enough time to do that today. Um, Magic BB, what's going on? From Orlando, Florida. Yeah. Was there a couple of years ago. Um, so, yeah. Like, uh, DJ Mike already uh, told Abdul, it could be the GPU on the laptop is not strong enough. That's definitely a possibility. Um, Jamal wants to know, can you give me some scratching advice? See, if you're going to ask me a question that is that broad, then the answer is also going to be that broad. Practice. 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 Like, if you want specific advice, this, the question needs to be a lot more specific. So if there's a specific thing about scratching that is giving you a hard time, then I might be able to steer you in the right direction. But I get a lot of these questions. You're not the only one. A lot of people send me emails like, hey, I need help uh, with my mixing skills. That's a very broad, like, statement. So all I can tell people then is, hey, put more time in and practice more. Um, let's see. Six, you got the S7 coming tomorrow. Good purchase. Yes, indeed. Uh, very good purchase for, uh, I mean, I love it, the, the price uh, for that unit. Love it.
it's a dope mixer. Like uh, we were just talking about it uh, a little bit earlier. It's a very dope mixer. And if you currently didn't have the S7, S9 or S11, the S7 is the one I would advise people to buy over the S9 for most people. Mm -hmm. uh, Rich Nice, what's going on? I was discussing with other DJs the pros and cons of streaming prearranged sets versus going off the top. Now that everyone is virtual, the vibe is so different with an actual crowd. I struggle going off the top. Um, all right, yeah, I mean, it's a good one. Look, here's the thing. So for me personally, like basically all the sets I do are freestyle, are just going off the vibe, going off the top. Um, that's what I prefer. I know for a fact that if you make prepared sets uh, that you're going to use as like a video or a stream, that you are able to um, put down a performance that might leave a better impression, like a super tight prepared set. Uh, that looks and sounds great. If you're playing in a club, that might not work if the crowd is not into it. But if you do it for like a video, yeah, you might look and sound better than a DJ who's doing a freestyle at the moment. But I prefer to go off the top and use that vibe. A couple of times that I did prepare like a video mix was when I was doing my specials on YouTube, like way back. I did like an LL Cool J mix, a Gangstar mix, stuff like that. I would prepare those because I wanted that to be a short, tight mix. So I would actually test in advance, okay, uh, um, how my pitch settings needed to be on the turntables, you name it, and which tracks I was going to play next. But that was like a special little mix. The vibe is different without an actual crowd, I agree. Because uh, normally in a club, if you go off the top and you're going off the crowd, you're going off the crowd reaction. Um, I've, I've said this many times for me this style of playing so playing when you're doing a stream without an actual audience is to me that translates to total freedom so you're not really going off the crowd reaction you're going off your own internal reaction so I'm grabbing tracks and it's giving me a vibe and I follow my vibe and hopefully I can get an audience that wants to follow me along on that vibe. That's my approach. I mean, I've seen plenty of DJs out there and they're just banging out the hits every time to, uh, uh, to please the crowd that they have. And they have a crowd that comes for that. To me, that actually feels a lot like what you were doing in the clubs. And a lot of times in the clubs, I didn't really like that feeling too much that, uh, the crowd basically dictates everything because you're going off their vibe. Here, you don't have to worry about that. Now, of course, there is a crowd reaction because if you have people watching, you might get a crowd reaction in the chat. But still, that freedom is mine. Like if someone comes in in the chat and he's like, I don't like what you're playing, it's very simple. Bye-bye. Find a different chat. I, I haven't been booked by a club owner to play in a club to get him clientele. I'm doing this stream for me. So um, that's where I get it from. I get that from my own reaction. So I'm going off the top, but I'm going off my own reaction. Uh, Jeffrey says, I have two hard drives in my MacBook Pro. Can I analyze my music in Serato from the other hard drive? Uh, yeah, I think so. I mean, you could just import the, 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 the music you wanted to have in Serato from the different hard drives and then let Serato analyze it. All right, Broski just got his phase DJ. I'm going to run it on the DDJ SC2 an audio technica turntable oh okay gotcha i was like wait a minute you're gonna use phase on a controller but i i i get it i understand um uh yeah i mean yeah phase is gonna work with any turntable as long as those uh, platters are spinning you're good to go it will work so um you should be fine uh 
Uh, I just don't know. Does the does that DVJ unlock DVS, or did you have to get like the separate um, extension uh, expansion pack for that? That's the only thing I don't know. With some controllers, they give you like that DVS license. With the other ones, you still have to get it. Uh, and I don't know which ones give you it or not. Uh, Vess says the pre-recorded set like Lazy Boy did for the Goldie Awards can be dope for a live stream. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, like. A prepared set for a live stream can be very impressive. And I see some people do it. It looks super impressive. Um, and of course, they have the skills to perform that set live. Um, it's just it's it's just kind of hard. Like, for instance, if you're streaming a lot, it's going to be really hard to do that. Let's say you're streaming once or twice a week. And that's not a lot because I know a lot of DJs that do more. But they're definitely playing freestyle. But if you're doing like one or two streams a week and all those streams need to be like prepared sets, that's going to take up a lot of time to do that. So like a set for uh, Goldie Awards, most DJs will be preparing for that for a pretty long time to enter a battle like that. Uh, so this, it's going to be really hard to perform that way, like on a regular basis. But yes, it can be super, super dope. 100%, I agree. Uh, just bought the NS7 FX brand new. The right deck doesn't scratch, is it, in the settings? Might be. But wait a minute, the NS7 FX? Is that a version that I'm not familiar with? I mean, I know the NS7, the 1, 2, and 3. Uh... Or am I misreading something here? I mean, I know the... the uh, I know I've seen the name before. I don't know if that's a settings issue. If one deck is working and the other one isn't. That's a bit... Um, that's a bit weird, though. Or was the FX just that original version? Oh wait, is that with the um, with the add-on thing that has the effects on it? I think that's what it is. I forgot about that. I forgot about that actually. Yeah, Rich Nice, I understand. Uh, you were talking about just preparing your uh, your playlist, not pre-recorded. Totally, totally get it, totally get it. Uh, Madan, what up, Al? Heb je DJ set nog staan? Dat wil ik van jou horen in de chat. Let me know. <laughs> Yeah, but Jeffrey, they're supposed to work. They're supposed to work. Um, so that's um, that's tricky. If one is not working, uh, well, if it's brand new and you can't find the answer online, I guess you're you're gonna have a warranty for that. So you you may have to bring it back. Alright, oké okay dan. Gebruik je er nog maar. Hè. Dan moet je ook een keer meekomen, Scratch Hou. <laughs> hey Mas, what up? I want question. Does anyone have the setup? Um, the Pioneer SI9? I guess you're saying S9 and two Rain 12s. I'm having on my two uh, on my channel two. Uh, if I use the third top button one Q, Q, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's see. I mean, I've played with the S9 and 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 two Rain 12s. I I think I've done that. Have I done that actually? Wait a minute. No, I haven't done that. 
I always grab the 72 because it has that USB hub so I can plug the Rain 12s uh, straight into the 72. So I actually haven't haven't played with that. So, um, but you're having on channel two, but if you use the third top button, you queue, but a queue does exist on my channel one. I do. Oh, okay. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit confused by the question. Um, yeah, I'm not totally understanding the question, but no, I don't have the, I don't have the, that setup. I haven't played with that setup. So Miz, after this lockdown, we'll have to do a a a a, a scratch hookup, bro. <laughs> yeah, man. We got to make that happen. Let me check something real quick. Uh huh. So, in the little office right here, it always gets mad hot. In the studio, I have a little bit more space, but hey, can't complain. At least I have a spot where I can uh, can still stream. doing great bro like um the only thing that that um i have to work on is i'm i'm, I'm behind when it comes to work i have like a lot of stuff that uh, i still want to finish and haven't finished yet but that's just like great motivation like like there's plenty of things uh uh left to do right now uh so they'll be coming soon for me the most important thing right now is to keep the consistency uh, uh, as far as the content, keep the consistency going. And this live streaming is really helping me out to uh, get that steady foundation with like one Q&A show a week, uh, one mix show every Monday, then twice a week on a Friday. The plug in stream also, even though it's basically just me working and doing some chatting, um, those parts really help me to get that schedule more steady. Uh, my Saturday sessions is going well, like that is really consistent every two weeks. So the next one is this Saturday. So that part is good, but there's a lot more content that I want to do or already have shot, but I just need to get time to edit it. Uh, it's just been a little, a little bit harder to do that with, um, with the different schedules because like until like two weeks ago, kids weren't going to school. The youngest started again, but this week they have like a holiday. The oldest hasn't started yet. Um, so he should be going back to school soon again as well. So that will free up some more time. Uh, so yeah, looking forward to that. Keeping the consistency going, but adding more content as we go along. J Style Sound, salute to you. Um, yeah, man. The thing is like, um, when you make videos for YouTube, for instance, uh, you can tell your audience, and I've done this in the past and I've messed up basically every time you can tell people like, yeah, a uh, new video every week, but then you have to shoot the video in advance. You have to edit, get it ready in time. If one or two things in your daily schedule change, it makes it harder to fulfill that unless you're in, um, where I'm trying to get into a mode where you have plenty of content recorded and finished, so you can actually have it ready a couple of weeks in advance. But the thing with live streaming is once you commit, you basically have to do it. And it's not like you have to do a lot of stuff in advance. You just have to be there, go online when you say you're going to go online. Um, so the accountability is different. Um, also because you know that people are there watching you live. I mean, it's not going to be like that if you don't have an audience yet. Uh, but for me, it is 
I feel the extra accountability when it comes to those live streams. Um, and the cool thing is like, uh, in some cases it would be better to prepare a little bit. Like for instance, when on Monday I did my vinyl mix, uh, I was gonna like really prepare by at least getting all the vinyl that I wanted to play. Didn't even have time for that, but it's like, okay, whatever. I didn't get time to prepare, doesn't matter. We have to stream, press stream and go and make it happen while you go. Um, and I'm kind of used to that as well, like just going for it on the fly. But um, yeah, there's a couple of like, like um, weekly items that I want to add to my platform. I say platform instead of YouTube because I want to make sure that I post a lot more of my videos, not just on YouTube, but also on places like LinkedIn and Facebook. And um, I have more and bigger plans that I will not speak about yet until the time is there. Philip Tan in the building, salute to you. So yeah, man, that's that's uh, that's basically it. Yeah, somehow you feel a different type of uh, accountability with streaming compared to the YouTube videos that you post. Even though I've had people there like let me know, like, hey, what's up? Where the new video is at? So you gotta try and stay away from um, promising too much and just do it. That's what I did. Just started to stream, started to do it. That's why I still haven't even promoted my streams that much. Once in a while, I'll do like a quick post, like I'm going live, but that's it. And I've been doing this for months and months now. Um, so in the near future, I will start to actually promote the stuff more. Uh, because I do notice like every week when I stream, especially with the mixed streams, every time I stream, I see at least a couple of people in the chat that are like, yo, you're on Twitch or hey, yo, I didn't know you were streaming. So every time new people start to... Um, discover that I'm here. And I'm not even talking about people that don't know me. I'm talking about people that watch my YouTube videos and now they're finding out. So when I start to promote, I'm pretty sure I can grow that audience as well. Mike Feliciano, I see you. Broski, you're new to Twitch. Is the platform good to DJ all music? Uh, the restrictions are pretty simple for now. You can do your live stream and play whatever you play. But after you are done with your live stream, the replay most likely will have a lot of gaps in there. They will mute all of the songs that have copyright claims. Uh, what I try to do now is just, I do my live stream. When I mix, I do the live stream. And after the stream is done, I delete it because people have gotten in trouble on Twitch for having clips from previous streams where copyrighted music was in the stream. That's why Mixcloud is the safest way to go, but that is just still a growing platform because a lot of people are on Twitch right now. So uh, when more DJs make the move to, 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 to Mixcloud, that's when people might start to use Mixcloud more. It is the perfect solution because you won't have any issues on, uh, on Mixcloud and the artist actually gets paid as well, which is a very good thing. So that's why I do my mix streams on Mixcloud and Twitch. But Twitch is, is, is going to stay for now, but Mixcloud is the, 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 the future for me, 100%. DJ Too Nice, uh, my pleasure, 100%. The thing with Twitch now is they have the community. Mixcloud doesn't have the community yet. There's people there, but there's a different type of vibe on Twitch. Um, but that can grow over time. They're starting to add more features. They need to do a lot more, though. Um, so it's possible to grow that as well. Like anything can grow. But like I said, it will take the DJs to head over there to make the crowd follow. Um, but yeah, I'll continue to do the streams on Mixcloud as well, just to have them there. And for people that follow me on Mixcloud to, um, to be able to check me there as well. Uh, was there anything else I wanted to talk about? I thought there was something and I don't remember what it is. Uh, it might come to me in a second. Uh, 
Cleveland Terry had some very good arguments to doubt the durability of Mixcloud legal status. Uh, okay. Uh, no, I, I didn't see the episode, so I, I have no idea what the, um, uh, the arguments were and how much of an insight he has to know uh, um, what he knows. So I, I don't know. I don't know what was said. Yeah, Mike, I wanted to do the, the, the beta test, but um, I couldn't get the, the phase transmitter and receiver to update to version 6, my laptop. Uh, I don't know what happened. I, I retried and retried. I... Uh, I updated Serato to the beta version and um, tried to update phase. I updated the phase manager, then I tried to update the, the phase uh, receiver and transmitter. Couldn't get it to work. So tomorrow I'll be back in the studio and I'll try to use the studio computer to update the phase hardware and then I can test it. So I was really looking forward to doing that and um, yeah, couldn't do it. So that was too bad. And uh, a couple other things that are in, in, the, in the Serato update that are pretty cool. So, for instance, uh, the, the, the BeatSource link uh, offline storage mode now works in Serato. I thought it worked. I, I, I made a mistake there. I, I think it worked in Rekordbox, not in Serato, but now it works in Serato. So you have the option to um, uh, store certain tracks, a certain amount of tracks offline. If you have the right subscription, Mike, I, I, I'm I'm 100 sure I'm gonna like that update. <laughs> uh, all right, so paraphrased, Mixcloud has a fairly small community, so the labels are fine with it. Uh, but it really, if it really starts to grow, then most want different terms. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know, uh, I, I can't really comment on that because I don't know the specific deal that Mixcloud has with the labels because if, I mean, they have deals with the labels, that's the only way they can claim their legality. So if they have deals, then it's not a matter of the labels being fine with it, the labels agree to a deal. Um, and if it really wants to grow, then most want different terms. Uh, I think that all has to do with what type of contracts were, were signed now. So uh, I don't know. I have no insight into that. And um, let's say that they really start to grow and that they would have to maybe pay more for the licenses. That might still be uh, something they could do if they grow enough and they have enough members that are paying. We'll have to wait and see. I mean... Uh, can't really comment on that beyond, uh, beyond that. Uh, did you keep the update to engine prime and the prime you, uh, peep the update? Yeah, I, uh, that's something I didn't have time for today. I'm going to do that tomorrow as well. Um do that update for prime and prime uh, uh, units. So I think I'll be talking about all of that on uh, on Sunday during plugging in. I'll be on the computer and that will give me a chance to uh, to show some of the stuff. Okay, you did and you found that then and DJ changed some stuff with the audio streaming service uh, beat source link. Um, they change some stuff. Okay. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen it at all, so I, I have no idea. Um, are you guys locked down or just tight restrictions due to COVID nineteen? Um, lockdown. Yes. We're on a on a lockdown and um, also curfew. So you can't be out after 9 p.m. until the next morning, uh, 4.30 a.m. Uh, lockdown has been going on for a couple of months and that will continue for a while. They have now started to, they just announced a couple of new um, measures where they're going to take away some of the restrictions. I don't think it's a good idea, but I understand that the government is dealing with... Um, they're dealing with fatigue from from the people 
like the amount of people that are getting tired of the the the, the restrictions is growing so they feel that they had to lighten some of the restrictions even though currently uh cases uh, um, are on the rise again we're looking at a third wave coming so uh, I honestly don't think it's a good idea to stop having restrictions right now but if you're if you're a government of a country it's, it's a rough place to be uh, you're never going to please everyone you're getting all of your info you're seeing what the best thing would be but um, it's going to be it's going to be rough to do that in like Western society where especially here in the Netherlands, people are not used to restrictions. So as soon as there are a couple of restrictions, people start to act as if we're in some kind of war zone with like terrible uh, conditions, which is not the case at all. I mean, that's just not the case. Um, I understand that it's really not, it's really bad for businesses. That's a different story, but uh, yeah. So for now, lockdown and all of that. Uh, Mike, see you next time. Salute. Uh, I had to find out the hard way during the AMA yesterday uh, to show off the new DJ. Okay, what was that? What was that? What was that? Okay, so the cue points in the beta are now all gone. Yeah. Ziggledome or Arena is going to allow a 1300 to 1500 event. Yeah. We'll have to see about stuff like that. I mean, it's a big, it's a big venue. So placement wise, you could fit that amount of people in there and have them spaced out far apart. But still, they have to go in and out through smaller corridors and public transportation to get there. Uh, yeah, it is what it is. We'll see what happens. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to test uh, the, the, the Prime updates um, tomorrow as well. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that on Sunday. I should have everything uh, installed, uh, updated and tested by then. Uh, yeah, so that's basically that. What else is going on? New messages. Did I miss anything? Cool. All right, that's good to know. Yeah, so I'll be updating the SC five thousands as well. Um, I forgot. I read the thing. I saw what the updates, uh, um, what they updated, but I forgot what it is now. But um, I will check that. This can go down. Did I activate the... Uh, see, I forgot to activate it again. I've been without that bar the entire time. You should be seeing it again now. Let me see. There it is. Wait a minute. Why is that on screen again? I turned that off. Uh, hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all didn't even tell me. You've been seeing that battery thing the entire time. So that's out of the frame now. All right. Show me, show me, show me. Two. There's one more. Come on, come on, come on, show me. Damn it. It's gone again. position am I in right now I, I'm looking at a screen but it has a delay so every time I touch that menu on the GoPro by the time the uh, restream screen shows me damn it it's going again okay so that's one two three four I think
Man, if I get the screen back now, I'm not even gonna bother with that other thing. Yeah, I can actually do that. I don't care guys, it's bothering me. So I wanted to change that. So that's one thing I really don't like about the, um, and I'll, I'll leave it for now. I'll leave it. I'll just put the bar back over it. But um, that's one thing I wish could be different on the GoPro that you could still have your front screen to change stuff like that instead of uh, not having any of that on here. But uh, yeah, it is what it is. I'll have to do it like that. And uh, the battery thing is not, uh, it's, it's not like the battery is, is, is going fast. That's, uh, that, that will last. I mean, it shouldn't be going down at all with the charger on there, <laughs> but it is. Uh, no, I don't know what happened actually, because I unplugged the HDMI cable from the ATEM Mini Pro, and then all of a sudden the connection um, uh, stop so maybe the ATEM Mini Pro does not want to be on air if there's no camera source connected That could be the thing Not sure Let's see because maybe I lost some of y'all if that's the case I'm actually gonna keep this one short because I got some edits to do um, And I'd rather use the time for that if 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 we're not back on if you're not here Uh, Armas wants to know, how do you find a manager when you're ready to play gigs? Um, well, I mean, if you're ready to play gigs, it's not as if you need a manager. So what, why, why do you feel you need a manager? Let's start there. 
Um, so we're talking about a manager, right? You're not talking about a booking agency because that's a different thing. Like if you're in a phase that you're ready to start playing gigs, so you're basically still in a beginner stage. Um, I mean, a manager was the last thing that was on my mind when I was in, in, in that phase of my uh, DJ career. So it really depends. Like if it's, if it's someone to help you with the business side of things, if you're a beginner DJ, I don't think there's going to be a lot of things that need to be managed um so let me know what you why you feel you need a manager and i mean i can put it even differently i've never had a manager ever and i know plenty of djs who don't have a manager now there's a there's a lot of djs that might have um a booking agency they're they're on the roster of a booking agency or they have like a booking agent that can help them to uh, negotiate their rate for gigs. But most of the times that's not when they start out. That's a little bit later. Original Fresh Prince. Yes, I had fun on Monday. I had a lot of fun on Monday. 100%. Magic BB says, friends and family have always been my best managers, word of mouth. <laughs> yep, 100%. Big time, well, good, what's good, what's good? What about DJ groups? Um, um, so, yeah, what about DJ groups? In, in, in what way? Let me know. And like Vess is saying, when it comes to booking agencies... Booking agencies indeed are not looking for a DJ who has no gigs yet. And as a DJ who has no gigs, a booking agency is not going to help. Booking agencies, and I can't speak for all booking agencies because uh, there's, there's a ton of booking agencies. But in a lot of cases, booking agencies basically... Um, basically, booking agencies are passive they answer the phone and then they can negotiate for you i've not seen a lot of booking agencies that were like really actively pursuing finding gigs for their djs now they have a roster they wait for that phone to ring like okay you got a gig okay um what are you looking for or if they get a call for one dj they might try to add a couple of the other djs from their roster so again i'm not talking about every booking agency but i have experience with a couple and with none of them, I saw that they were like actively out there trying to find me gigs. Um, I also saw that in a lot of cases when it came to house music, not my music, but when they had like a house roster, they wouldn't even look at DJs unless they had like their own music out. So they either want DJs that already have like something going because the only way they make money is if they can get you booked and it's easier to book a dj who has a buzz or house djs who have music out so they built following that way um santiago says i was an event promoter i have three years and i don't organize any event how to start again all right like this is the weirdest time ever of course so um i would not know what to tell you like right now for organizing events so first off it really depends on where you are and what the current restrictions are that you're dealing with in your area um because over here like for instance everything is closed now uh they just did a test to see in what way they might be able to accommodate a couple of people but um uh, this is the weirdest time ever of course and uh, so Vess is talking about this, and this is what I've always done as well, is DJs are setting up their own events. They book DJs who do their own events, so they start booking each other. Uh, I, I didn't really do that, but we did do a lot of our own events just to, to make our own gigs. But yes, also a lot of DJs will try to connect with other people, who other DJs who have their own events, and then they will book each other they'll do like the cross promotion and play at each other's gigs um so santiago you're in antwerp 
Um, so I think you're dealing not exactly with the same restrictions as, as we are here. Uh, so I do know that, for instance, y'all kept the schools open, but I do think you you have a bunch of the same restrictions as we have. I don't know right now. Um, I would not even be thinking about starting events right now because there's not a lot you can do. Um, I don't know, bro. It's, it's difficult. Uh, so big time, you, you, you talk about DJ groups and I asked you what you meant and you said, do you think they're worth it? Um, but what is a DJ group? In, um, yeah, what, what, what is the meaning of a DJ group? I mean, I could say uh, like a group of DJs, but in what way? Does it mean that you um, you get together and get booked together? Or, uh, yeah, that's, that's the part I want to know. I mean, l l let me put it like this. I've been part of a DJ team with one other DJ. And we played together as a DJ team for a very long time, like for years. Um, and I mean, that was super dope because it worked because we clicked, we connected, we were able to really play together. Uh, um, but we also tried to do like this um, group thing where we had like six or seven DJs and an MC and we had a name for it and we wanted to do stuff like that. Didn't really work out because there's too many people involved to keep everything rolling smoothly. Um, so that didn't last too long. So you're talking about like example, fleet DJs or groups you gotta pay dues monthly. Uh, no, I still don't understand the concept, what that means. I've heard of Fleet DJs once, but I don't know what exactly that is. Um, um, let me think. You got to pay monthly dues. Uh, well, I'm actually, uh, like, I'm very curious. I want to know more uh, about this concept, what that means exactly. So if, if you can tell me more, please do. This is what I love. This gives me a chance to uh, uh, actually learn. Uh, Axbedeen, thank you for the follow. Uh, Kanzi, what's going on? Do you think I need to scratch to be considered a DJ by promoters and club owners or to get booked? No, definitely not. Very simple, no. You do not need to know how to scratch to be considered a DJ or to get bookings. Um, I think it's a great skill uh, to add to your skill set. To me, it makes DJing more fun, but it's not the thing that's going to get you to bookings at all. Um... Uh, so, Vess, you probably meant to write Mani <laughs> instead of Jamie. Um, so, yes, Major League, that was DJ Mani and myself. We were that DJ team. After that, like a couple of years later, we were still doing stuff together. But then we got together with... Um, a bunch of DJs, we were like, 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 uh, uh, I don't know how it started, uh, but the, the concept was to uh, uh, gather a bunch of DJs that were basically all from the same era, who specialized in music from that era. Uh, so the thing you're talking about here is classic cutters. And that was like uh, a collaborative effort that included uh, Mani and myself. Yes, DJ DNS was in there as well. Uh, DJ Chainsaw, All Star Fresh. Uh, um, um, wow, sorry guys. <laughs> for, for the guys I forgot to mention. A um, um, couple more DJs who I didn't know personally until I met them then. And uh, MC Prime and Lexe, two MCs. But the thing is, like, we all lived in different cities. We all had our own lives. And when we wanted to do, like, uh, stuff like, for instance, we started out to promote the name. So we started to do, like, mix CDs. Did a couple of mix CDs, classic cutters, mix CDs. And we would do, like, classic cutters, mini mixes to post on uh, SoundCloud. And um, then it becomes, like, a little bit you run into issues like, hey, we want to do this. Can everyone do contribute the same amount? And 
then you start to wait around for people and like if some people have more drive than others it tends not to really work and i mean salute to all the guys there were like no um no no personal issues but it was just like this is not really working like you're waiting for people too long and you want to continue to move so then you feel like you're being held back because now you can't move the way you want to move because you're depending on other people so that just didn't really pan out uh so the idea was cool but that's my only experience basically with like having a, a group uh so let me scroll back for a sec so i think i missed a bunch now and i mean i've done a bunch of stuff with dns and turn together and um that was basically as like the the the, the superhero djs um and that was a different type of uh, story that was basically we played together as the superhero djs but the concept was actually that you had three djs we all had our own dj set so we were playing with six turntables three mixers um that was dope to do but even then you ran into issues when you were, wanted to do like a promo thing like uh, uh uh you have to be on the exact same page and have the exact same time and effort to put in otherwise it becomes hard to do um but we will most definitely do some things in the uh, in the future not maybe not under that name but we will be doing stuff like that in the future again uh, when the market for events open back up, do you think the demand will exceed the supply of DJs? Hell no. <laughs> no, there, there, there's, um, there are so many DJs. So let's just say, for instance, that instead of having the same type of events that we had now, we end up with twice as many events, but all smaller. There's still plenty of DJs to fill all of that. Like, there's a lot of DJs. So, uh, Yoki, I, I don't see that happening that... Uh, we run out of DJs. Not at all. No. Uh, Shannon, what's up? I'm aware that Facebook and other platforms aren't allowing live streams because of the copyright situation, but is there a way to get a license or pay to be just allowed to do your thing without being muted? Uh, no. No. It's not like a DJ can like buy a, a, a license somewhere to play, play the music from all of those labels. Um... Well, let me put it like that. I'm, I'm not saying it's not possible. I just don't think it's affordable. And it's going to take a lot of work because you would have to actually sit down with those labels and make a deal. Um, so, yeah. I don't think it's an option you should be looking at. Uh, let me see. What did I miss? I see Vess and Philip are talking about something. Oh yeah, the, the own events thing. Got you. Yeah. Uh, I see a rush coming starting in the summer 21, 22. Yeah, I mean, uh, as soon as things can open up, I know people are 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 can't wait to get started again. But like I said, there's there's so many DJs, so that would never be the problem. Like like promoters standing around like i have an event but there's no djs to book uh -uh, not happening <laughs> uh i know majority is supposed to help book you network with other known artists get exclusive music etc uh okay um yeah like i have no experience with dj groups like that uh big time so i i have no idea if, if that's a good thing um yeah, no idea. No idea at all. Mm -mm -mm. Scratch DJs and wedding DJs have egos. That's a, that's a bold statement, uh, Big Time. I don't know... Let me put it like this. I don't know a lot of wedding DJs. That is something I actually can't speak on. So I don't know if that's a fact. Uh, I can't speak for scratch DJs. Not all, but I know a lot of scratch DJs. Basically, all of the scratch DJs that I know do not have an ego. 
That's all I can say. I know a lot of scratch DJs, and the ones I know, basically all of them have no ego. Super cool, cool guys, or even uh, not antisocial, but like almost like uh, um, introvert types that are just really chill, don't speak a lot, and and, and scratch. So uh, I don't know about that big time. Like wedding DJs, I don't, I don't know. I think there's a little thing between like club DJs and wedding DJs. I think I've heard or seen a couple of times that wedding DJs feel that club DJs feel that they're better, but I don't have that experience. YSM, cassette tape mixes. <laughs> that takes me way back. All right, so Philip Tan says, most of the wedding DJs I know around here are strictly business. It's a job. You apply to work with them with previous experience, or you start out as a roadie and then earn more responsibility over time. Santiago says, brother, another question. Do you have respect for the kids from nowadays that can't beat match two songs, go to Media Markt and buy a DJ controller, play music for a cocktail or 50 euros? Um, okay. Do I have respect for those kids? Uh, I'm not going to disrespect them. Let me put it like that. But if if they can't beat match two songs and they get a DJ controller and they can find a spot where they can play music for a cocktail for 50 euros, do your thing. Uh, that is most likely not a place that would ever book a proper DJ anyway. So, hey man, if they can get a... a a gig where they can play with their controller for 50 euros or for a cocktail uh whatever yeah so that's not really a thought process that goes on in my head that i'm thinking about stuff uh, uh stuff like that like hmm, i don't respect that or or anything like that yeah So, okay, big time, maybe I misunderstood because I, I see your conversation with Philip here. So maybe you're talking about um, scratch DJs and wedding DJs in that group type of uh, uh, format. So maybe you run into like groups and that they're kind of cocky that they don't want to add people through the group. Maybe it's a situation like that. Then still, uh, those are not the DJs that, that, that I know because I do know plenty of collectives that used to uh, battle here in the Netherlands, like like turntablism groups and all of those cats were super cool as well um okay so this is in philly most don't want to work with you unless you can do something for them and not better than them so okay i i i understand where you're coming from yeah i understand what you mean and that might be more of a not just a philly thing but it might just be that especially here in the netherlands it's just a more laid-back vibe but the turntablists i know from other countries have always been cool, uh, cool as well. Uh, then again, like Philly, I mean, I've been to Philly. I like Philly. Uh, I do know, like for instance, a lot of times in the past, like back in the nineties, whenever I saw or met like artists, including DJs from New York, they were the cockiest that that is a fact um but it were more artists than djs to be specific like they felt since they came from the mecca of hip-hop that they were like the ultimate thing like the gods and they acted that way um so i don't know i'm there's there's a definite difference between attitudes when you compare countries 100 percent Some platforms have a white list that allows certain accounts or people to stream freely. Uh, be nice on Instagram. Yeah, I, I still don't know what's up with that. I still don't know what's up with that. Does he never have issues? I mean, he had that one major stream that blew up. I, I haven't followed D nice since then to know is, is the stream like popping every time? Like I, I remember like the weeks before that he always had like, I, I thought he said he had like a couple of hundred. But that one time really blew up that it got all of those celebs in there. To be honest, like if he's been streaming ever since and never has issues, then I don't know what's happening there. Uh, I can totally understand that for that one time that um, maybe they 
just let it slide because of the super uh, hype and promo that it brought to the platform. I don't know. I don't know. Because I've heard that before with some people like, hey, everyone's getting blocked, but I see one or two DJs who are doing it. Uh, I've seen the local groups, really just a bunch of DJs who are friends and dig the same music, succeed in getting festival lineup because once one person can get a booking, they start referring their friends. It's a good setup. Yeah, I mean, that can, that could work sometimes. Um, since COVID hit, you notice there's more DJs with table streaming than controllers. Um, I would have to say for i'm i haven't been browsing twitch which is actually really hard on twitch that's the one thing i really don't like about twitch it's not really a searchable platform if you compare it to like youtube but yes yes i think most of the djs i've seen streaming were either streaming with turntables or in some cases with some of those house djs with cdjs uh i have not seen a lot of controllers there's one dj that i know that's the dj i was just talking about the dj i i, I had the team with dj mani he streams like five six days a week on twitch uh mixing tracks uh with video and he's playing on the ddj sz that's like the one dj who i see play on the controller like six days a week but beyond that, I see a lot of turntables. That is a fact, a lot of turntables. Ryan, what up? Uh, when would you say is a good time to upgrade your equipment? When you feel that the equipment you currently have does not suit your needs. It's as simple as that. You can have the most entry level controller, but if it does exactly what you need it to do, then you're good to go. When you start to feel like, I wish I could do this, because you see that you can do that on other equipment, but you can't do it on your equipment. And you feel that that is really missing from either your performance or you just wanna have fun with that feature or those features. As soon as you start to feel that your equipment can't do what you want it to do, that's the time to look to upgrade. And then you gotta find the equipment that does what you're looking for. Like it's not, going to be the thing that makes you the greatest DJ because that's not the equipment but it is a fact like some equipment will allow you to do things that you can only do with that and the fun aspect is also a reason why you could be like hey it's time for me to upgrade so that is really it if you're currently content and you don't need extra features then there's no need to upgrade star of the ego feel the soul says DJ victorious Feed the soul, yeah, got you. Pedis and panas or pedis and panas? Nederlands ook nog, hallo. What up? What do you think about using synthesizer plus an XDJ XZ? Uh, no checkmate. Uh, I don't think anything about it. If you feel that you can do uh, do stuff performance-wise uh, by adding the synth, I would say go for it. That's the thing. Like like like, uh, um, it's it all depends on on if it helps you with your performance. If it allows you to be more creative. If it gives you that extra freedom you're looking for. If you're a skilled player and you actually are able to play like melodies over music that you're playing, it could be a dope setup. That's what I meant, club and wedding DJs. Got you big time, yep. If a promoter or club is willing to allow somebody who can't beat match the DJ, the DJ is not at fault and it says more about the venue promoter. Yeah, that's what I said, like most of the times if someone will book that, they're probably not gonna book a, a proper DJ anyway, yeah. Uh, bro, I mean, I'm DJing in clubs who come with big controller and call themselves DJs. You, you who put so much time in learning the craft get treated the same as one of those who takes it the easy way. So again, if you get treated the same, that is not up to that other person with less skills. It's the person who is treating you the same. So if someone has you playing and that other guy playing, 
you are good, that person isn't, and you're both you both get treated the same by the promoter or whatever. That's not that other DJ's fault, if you want to call that person a DJ. That's the fault of the promoter. So I understand what you mean. I, I trust me, I understand what you mean. Like I, I've I've been in that phase where I was like, why do they call that a DJ? That's not a DJ. Now they think we're the same, and you feel that like b because you see someone who's totally not skilled. I think I just mentally moved past that a long time ago, and I don't let it uh, uh, bother me or affect me at all anymore. I, I I I could care less, but it tells me something about people who do book that person. That's the thing. Uh, what would you say is a good size library for a DJ? Depends on so many things. So first off, do you play one genre of music? Do you play all genres of music or something in between? That's going to dictate already if you have more or less music. Uh, I'm trying to get my crates down because there's too much music in there and I don't like that. It makes it harder to like actually go through your music. So I can't say what's proper. I'm, I know some people who prefer to go on the road with like a 300 gig hard drive with music. If that works for them, that works for them. I'm trying to get my file uh, 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 folders to be smaller and smaller. So I don't know. Okay, so uh, um, cool about D Nice. I didn't know that. So 3,000 people. That's, uh, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> uh, Master Dynamut says, I feel like new DJs don't understand the real use for beat matching. I had a friend telling me the same thing about how it's just technology, uh, so why not just use the sync button? Um, um, yeah. Look, it all depends on how someone rolls into this whole DJ thing. If they don't have any uh, proper guidance or, or uh, uh, reference, then they don't know any better. That's a fact. So let me read the rest. But the reason you learn beat matching is mostly to do with songs that don't uh, match beat grids, such as songs where BPMs change, um, or you play a song on the fly and your analyzed song has a very good beat grid. And these situations arise way more often than people think. Uh, but that's funny what you just described because that's not why you learn how to beat match because we were beat matching before we had beat grids. You beat match because you're playing songs that have different tempos and you make sure they're playing at the same tempo so you can actually do a blend. That's what beat matching is for. Um, it's also an overrated thing because especially in certain genres of music, like if you play hip hop and R&B and you're at the high part of that evening, you're not mixing that much. There's a lot more dropping on the one going on. Um, so I'm not saying that beat, march, beat matching isn't a part of the whole mixing experience, but um, for most of the great parties I've rocked during the best parts of the night, it was definitely not about the beat matching and the mixing. It was about the song selection, dropping in at the right time, uh, the right hosting, you name it, that really made the whole joint just pop off, just go go crazy um but it is like beat matching just to understand what it's for that is one of the fundamentals of djing like i don't care if someone prefers to use sync and not do it by ear that's up to that person i will always tell people it's better to also know how to do it by ear because you might run into a situation where sync is not working or you're using uh one song that has live music on there so music being played live by musicians so you're going to have a fluctuating bpm so yes your sync is not going to save you um so i think it's always good to know um but like i said some people roll into djing not getting the proper guidance so they don't really understand the fundamentals um so i don't blame them for not understanding Deepak from Nepal in the building. Salute to you. Shannon Lewis from NYC. Uh, you're right about the NYC DJs being big headed. Yeah. And I mean, my experience is not from current years. I mean, the last time I was in New York was, I think, 2004 
but especially in the 90s when they came over here, I remember a lot of artists and some DJs were definitely feeling themselves. And I think they treated the rest of the world and Europe as like, um, just not the real deal yet. Like, hey, we're coming to bring that real. These people don't know anything about this. We are the gods of this whole hip hop thing. Not all of them, though. I've talked to cool cats as well. But yeah, they had a certain vibe to them. Hope Alone was good. Ah, right, that's great to hear. Dope. Eddie, salute to you as well. Uh -huh. How do you handle yourself in this difficult time? I can imagine DJing was your only income and bill, bills keep coming. Um, so yeah, that's the thing for me. DJing was, uh, has for the last couple of years not been my main income. So um, in that way, DJing over the years has led to everything I do now because everything including like the live streams the video uh videos on my own platforms but also the stuff i do for other brands create content for other brands paid um that became a bigger part of my income over the years so it went from djing being the one and only source of income to having like a little side money with youtube but then when i started to do more stuff um it started to add up and for the last two years DJing has not been like the, the the main source. It's been a mix. So that has helped me out in this situation because especially like production, video production, content creation, that can be done at any time. I don't need a venue. Like even now, like for instance, I have the studio where I create my content, but now with the curfew that we have at night, I couldn't stay in the studio, but I can do a live stream right here in this mini office at home. If DJing was my only source of income, this would be a pretty terrible time, even though in the Netherlands we do have some support. So uh, there is help from the government for um, people like us as well. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a horrible situation, of course. So let's not make light of it. Um, gotta check the time. Hold up. Give me one second because I need to check something real quick. to go tell my son good night it's already his bedtime didn't see that before uh, I use the SZ2 and I still use my 35 year old Technics SL1200 they both rock yeah I still have uh, my first pair of SL1200s and I've had those for um, I gotta do some math here when did I get them? I've had mine for like 28 years, I think. My first pair of uh, SL1200s. Before that, I had like old belt drive turntables, but yeah. And I didn't buy them new either, so they're definitely older than 28 years. Mm, the nice thing about streaming for turntable DJs, you don't have to lug your gear around from venue to venue. Yes. Use turntables in front of the camera. I prefer to carry my controller if I would have to play a live gig. Now, um, look, for my gigs, I normally play with turntables. A lot of times, turntables will be present at the venue. They will have those. Uh, and I would bring a mixer a lot of times because they didn't have the scratch mixers. Um, that's become more safe now since I started playing with Phase because I didn't have to worry about if the turntable had like a faulty tone arm or RCA cable or anything like that. 
but especially like with the gig I did on Monday, like the all vinyl gigs, being able to do that and just have all of the vinyl there and not have to carry it around, that alone is one of the reasons why I would definitely um, do more vinyl stuff in the studio, but not taking it to gigs, man. Uh, most Dutch DJs are on controller. Um, well, no, that's not true. I mean, CDJ is not a controller. Let's just uh, start there. That's a media player. So the Netherlands is a little bit different. The CDJ is the, the, the weapon of choice for a lot of DJs. Most of the clubs here will have a CDJ setup. So that is the, um, the thing. So yeah, like the DJs you name here, like Superior is on the CDJs most of the times. Air One is on the CDJs. Uh, full crate does turntables, but I also see more CDJs. Uh, of course, a lot of the DJs I hang with will still use turntables as well. But um, yeah, this is really CDJ country. And that, that was a thing that, that caught my attention. And I was just talking to someone from Pioneer uh, yesterday about this. When I did my stream on Friday and I was using the CDJ 3000s, um, I assumed that everyone was familiar with the CDJ workflow. And the two times I used them in a live stream, I noticed like, hey, especially in the US, you still have people that actually really aren't familiar with that way of playing when that's been like the norm here in the Netherlands. So I actually had to explain multiple times how you prepare music in record box and bring it on a flash drive and you just insert the flash drive into CDJs and that's the workflow. Um, so that was, that was funny to see how different it is, but our country was just the, 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 basically like the CDJ Mecca, like so many DJs use the CDJs over here. Marcus Giles in the building, salute to you. And we have uh, the Mahakuma, thank you for the follow. All right, let's see. I already have a price point set for a bar, club, sweet 16, weddings, etc. Would you say an increase of 20% when you upgrade your equipment is a good point to start? Ooh, wow. Like, again, I have no experience when it comes to that. Um, I don't know, though. Like, I can imagine if you make the investment to upgrade your equipment that you want to earn that back. I don't know if an increase uh, of, of your fee is the way to do that. Um, unless the upgrade really is an upgrade to the event as well. So, and I'm just thinking out loud here because I have no experience in that field. But if you, for instance, upgrade your audio equipment and lighting, and now you actually have better, not per se louder, but better audio better more impressive lighting so it really adds to the show and i can imagine that you want to charge a little bit more for that but if you have one controller and you go to a different controller that is more fun for you but the audience wouldn't really know the difference i don't know if that justifies like a, a, an increase but i don't know i'm not sure like, like i said again you're investing in that equipment you have to earn that back um but uh I don't know. I don't know. That that's that, that that is a scene I'm so unfamiliar with, like the whole mobile scene, and always bringing your own equipment. Um, how that works, and when and why DJs at a certain point will increase their price. If that's just something like normally for DJs, you'll increase the price when the market dictates it. So if there's like, if the demand is there, then you know you can increase your price. If no one's calling, that's not the right time to become more expensive. Most likely, unless you're so cheap that people just don't want to book you because they probably feel they're not going to get anything worthy. Like if you offer your wedding DJ services for $5, there's not a lot of people that will start calling because let's be honest, if something costs $5, you probably are expecting to get $5 worth of uh, a wedding DJ. <laughs> Um, let's see, they call me Giles, what up? No Checkmate says how to choose a nice selection to play 
from a very large song library. Well, that's the thing. Like, if your library is really large, it makes it more difficult to find songs. And uh, for me personally, like, I don't make um, I don't make a selection like that per gig. But when I was making my my folders, my crates, you go through your song library. And basically, with every song you run into, you have to ask yourself a question. Is this a song you would actually play? Does it have a purpose when I'm DJing? Because I have plenty of music I love to listen to, but I know it's not going to work in a club. So there's no need for me to have that in my folders. Even though with live streaming now, it's a little bit different because I can actually add some of those songs that I really like that aren't club worthy and play them in a live stream. But yeah... Um, that takes time. I mean, I used to do that with my vinyl before gigs. I would go through the entire wall and there's plenty of vinyl in my collection that I don't bring to clubs because it's not club material, just dope music. Um, and if you have a large song library, that's a lot of work. I've been teaching some fellow Twitch fam to DJ and I had them learn beat matching first, then showed them sync features, song selection uh, uh, these days is key for sure. Nothing against sync, but they should know. Yeah, again, like I said, like I think it's very, uh, it's, it's a very great skill to have just in case skill, uh, a, a sync doesn't work. If you depend on sync, then you could be in trouble. Uh, in certain situations. Christopher, what's good? I think it's all about how much you wanna learn and if you're interested in the history and the basics. I mean, a lot of people in hip hop today don't know about James Brown. Yeah, it's very true. I was always interested, but I do also come from a different era. But you have young kids now that are interested as well. And then again, a lot aren't. It's a different era. People are a little bit more lazy when it comes to um, gathering information because we're so used to having everything just one click away so as soon as you have to do more than that a lot of people will just be like yeah i don't want to go through that trouble for us it was different like for me it was buying uh buying albums reading the back reading the inside sleeve seeing credits and then seeing like this song contains and then you would see the sample information and then i would find like all of these old uh, uh, soul and funk artists and then I would go to like uh, record stores looking to like the secondhand bins they had and then run into the names that I saw in sample credits and was like oh whoa wait a minute I, I know this name and then you go check out that vinyl and you find out all of this great music but there has to be a certain level of curiosity in you to take that step now again if you're starting out in the vinyl days when you didn't even have stuff like sync there's not an option to choose how you want to start. We only had one way. So it's not like all of us were so real to do it that way. That was the only way you could do it. And I don't blame people who start now and they get DJ software and they load a track and then they load a track there. And if they hit that button, then they're playing at the same speed. You're like, oh, wow, cool. And you can have mad fun doing it. I totally understand why you would think that's dope and unless someone tells you like hey if you want to go out and play and here let me load this song for you hit sync now try it see it doesn't work when you play this type of song so maybe you should also learn how to do this and that if they don't have someone to tell them that then it's pretty obvious that they're not hip to how and what can happen um different era 100 percent Don't forget, most DJs these days are taught to recreate routines and do the transition the big name and producer do. Fundamentals are hardly known. That's why I like Rob Swift. He really teaches people about the history and the why behind the technique. Um, I can, I, I mean, I, I don't know this firsthand, but I can really see that happening. Like DJ, that they see videos from these big DJs, they hear the mixed two tracks, and then they try to do that. Funny thing, I talked about DJ Mani, the DJ I was in a DJ team with, and I don't know how many years ago this was, but we were part of the jury for a national DJ contest. And this contest would have DJs from all different types of uh, genres uh, compete 
first we went all throughout the country for the preliminary rounds and uh, you could just tell like a lot of people in there were mimicking what they saw their favorite, especially with house, their favorite house DJ do. And they were mimicking the movements, but you could tell half the time they didn't even know why they were doing the movements. I'm not even talking about DJ techniques, but even like with certain hand movements and then they would start to do this move in the middle of a breakdown, not when the drop hit, but they just saw that this is what their favorite DJ was doing. And they were doing it when there was like a total breakdown and no drums. So you could tell like a lot of times people will actually just emulate what they see. Um, so I, I, I hear you, Vess, when you say that. Um, so it all depends on who's teaching. Like if you have a teacher that starts with the fundamentals, um, that's why my first DJ course is all about just fundamentals, because I think not just that it's important for people to know that, but you're going to have so much more fun DJing if you understand and master the fundamentals. It makes DJing more fun when you actually know how to do those things and understand the structure of music. So, yeah. Uh, Jazzy Lamel, do you own a studio or make beats or anything like that? That's a funny thing. Those are totally different things. Do I own a studio or do I make beats? Um, so I have a studio. I also make beats. And uh, so in that case, the answer would be yes. Uh, do you need a studio to make beats? No, definitely not. And I don't have the studio to make beats. I just need to have a space where I can create my content. And that means shoot my videos, record mixes, make music, stream, you name it. This is not the studio. I'm at home right now. Um, so I do all of, uh, all of the above just in time, seven, 10. Thank you for the follow. Uh, today's DJ majority learned from YouTube videos and you can tell they all sound the same, uh, practicing. Yeah. See, it, uh, it, it depends on what YouTube videos and it's not, not to name myself, but if you're going on YouTube and you're watching actual DJ tutorials, and there's plenty of those there too that teach you the, the fundamentals and the techniques, then there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, YouTube is a great learning school. I've, I've taught myself plenty new skills um, through YouTube from like, like, like filming, video editing, uh, you name it. But if you're, watch, if you're learning by watching certain DJs and you try to just do what you see them do, uh, yeah, that that part is not going to actually shape you as a DJ. So even if you start out that way, that's not the biggest issue. If you start out emulating other DJs, but once you master enough of the fundamentals, it is then up to you to create your own identity and turn into yourself. It's the same with like a lot of beat makers. They will start out emulating producers they like, make those type of beats and once they develop more of a skill and an understanding of sound, then they start to create more of their own sound. Uh, brother, what about the DJs who were not organized and this situation came in between? How do you think um, are these people doing? Uh, DJ, a lot of DJs around the world have been going through a rough, rough time. And I can imagine that a lot of them um, may have tried to go and find different work, if that's even possible, because a lot of things were impossible. So a lot of people are in financial trouble. That's just, uh, that's just a fact. So I can understand or imagine that there are people that are in a really terrible situation right now. And maybe they had to cut down on a lot of things that they were used to, or maybe they're in a terrible living condition right now. I'm not sure, but yeah, a lot of people have it rough, not just DJs in, in, in any, uh, part of society. I was wondering how you feel about the zone 96. Uh, no, I've never played on it. I have no experience with it. So, um, 
So you're thinking about trading in your DJM 900 Nexus for one of those. I mean, I always hear that they have like, 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 um, good sound and, and, and you name it, but I have no experience with it. So if you feel that that unit has features that you're missing on your 900, then it might be the right choice for you. So, um, but you got two CDJ 3000s. That is super dope. I love the set that I was using, the two uh, 3000s with the S11. Oh, really like that. Hey, Mo Berry, what's going on? Salute to you. As you can tell, that was posted like 15 minutes ago. So I'm running behind again answering these questions. Master TV up in here. Uh, carry out versus direct crowd. I'll carry your car if I have to. What? <laughs> All right, so Mixmaster has a good uh, piece of advice for just in time. Um, and Vest says Dutch DJs live streaming use controllers. Which ones? I only know Mani. I haven't seen other DJs, uh, Dutch DJs live streaming with controllers, actually. Not yet. But I haven't checked that many live streams either. Would you consider the Rain 12 a turntable? Uh, no. No, that's a controller. It's not a turntable because you cannot play vinyl on it. Simple as that. It is just a controller. Um, nothing wrong with that. It's a controller with a motorized platter that makes it feel like a turntable, but it's not a turntable. Um, yeah, that's what it is. It's a controller. A dope controller, but that's why I always tell people, like, if you also want to play vinyl, then the 12 is not a good choice for you. Um, I mean, I, I love the 12s, they're really dope, but I cannot play my vinyl on them. <laughs> mm, got the two, but make sure we're ready. EQ. I bet that Pioneer is coming with a DJ controller like the 12. Um, I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I mean, up until this point, they've not been into the whole uh, motorized platter thing uh, they 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 have a, a, a strong market share with their CDJs they do a lot with their controllers I don't know I don't know uh, use it with my C <laughs> don't know if you got this question did you try a Serato beta um, yeah I got the question uh, DJ Bourne but um Somehow the update of the transmitter and receiver didn't work. I could not update the six. I had the new uh, uh, phase manager updated Serato to the beta and um, the update kept on failing for the uh, transmitter and receiver. So I'm gonna try again in the studio tomorrow. So no, no, I went to the studio today basically just to do that and um, it didn't work. Uh, call me Giles, thank you. I love watching streaming DJs pulling out vinyl from the sh uh, shelves at home, especially when it's obvious they hadn't planned it. They're writing a vibe and their whole library at arm's reach. Yeah. And I mean, that's the cool thing. Your vinyl is right there. I did the same thing. I didn't have it prepared. So I only had like one little stack in a crate and played from that for the first part. And after that, I just went to the wall and just started to look for stuff. Um, yeah, man. Dodge Danger, what's up? I have my first gig as an opener for a major name end of next month. Clubs are open here. Any pointers to battle nervousness? First off, dope that you actually have uh, um, have a gig. Where you're at? Where you at that you're open again? That's dope. Um, pointers to battle nervousness. Uh, I mean, a couple of things. Um, Give me one second before I get into that.
Sorry about that. Had to uh, jump in for a second, uh, get in that daddy mode. Trying to work, but once your ear hears that uh, kids aren't listening, I cannot let that go. All right, back to the nervousness. So first off, a couple of things that you should definitely make sure you do is uh, make sure that everything you can know that you know so make sure that the communication is right so first off uh make sure you know exactly what is expected of you so what type of gig it is what your what type of people what you're supposed to play you name it make sure you know exactly what type of equipment is there if they have what you need or if you're bringing some of your own if you're going to be able to connect that uh, if you have a chance, go there in advance to check that club out so you can see the actual booth. Stuff like that. Knowing what equipment you're playing on, having the right music there, being just prepared for that situation so there's no real surprises there. That can give you a little uh, a peace of mind right there, not having to worry about stuff like that. Um, beyond that, I mean, I don't know if you're going to be playing a prepared set or if you're gonna go freestyle. So let me just assume that you're just gonna bring music. I would prepare the first couple of tracks, just that part of your mix, just the first two, three th uh, songs. Prepare that, practice it a thousand times. So you have a nice start. So the first couple of tracks go smooth and then uh, that'll help you build some confidence as well. Um, don't overthink it and understand that you most likely will make a couple of mistakes. Also understand that that's not a problem at all. Most mistakes aren't really even noticed by a lot of people. So don't overthink that. Don't show that. So if you make a mistake, carry on right away. Don't linger on that. Um, but yeah, be as prepared as you can so there's not a lot of surprises. I mean, ner ner nervousness is going to be there. It's, it's just a thing. And that's, that's okay. Um, but once you start, hopefully that, that will disappear. So having the first couple of tracks prepared, knowing what you're going to do, having your first mix go right, that can help you. But even if that first mix goes wrong, you just have to keep it going. So I think that's important. People want to do their first gig perfect most of the time that will just not be the case there can always be factors even outside of your control that will influence that gig so if you know in advance like hey probably some things are not going to go the way i expected them to go and know that that's not a terrible thing that could hopefully help you out a bit i mean at sometimes it's it's it, i have I've answered a question like this before, like a couple of years ago, but it is kind of hard for me because like the first gig is so long ago that it's kind of hard for me to remember how I actually felt then. But I, I do know that I was definitely overthinking when I was mixing, spending a, too much time syncing up the tracks uh, uh, with beat matching uh, longer than I would at home. So it, it, it's just not the same thing as playing at home. So that will happen uh, um, most likely. Another quick question. I've noticed lately on my computer, Serato DJ is lagging and at the time freezing up. I analyzed everything, Amazon and CDs are sources for music, so no corrupted files. Could this be a sign that the computer could be on its way out uh, or something else I should look for? Um, it, it, it could be the computer, but I don't know. So, so I, I don't know what else you do on your computer, um, what, uh, um, what else is running on your computer while you're using Serato DJ. Maybe there's a program in the background that's really sucking up the RAM or CPU. I, I, I don't know. So is it an older computer? Um, there's a ton of things that could cause that. I mean, freezing up, I really don't have that happening, but I, I mean, I use an older laptop and I can tell that it has a hard time. Um, so I shouldn't do too much at the same time. Okay, Master TV says, for the old school DJs, today I spin on my old Numark CDX with phase wireless and it works smoothly. Dope. That's dope. Norbski, salute to you. 
DJ Junkie says, where is the best social media platform to live stream? Um, I would say Twitch. Mixcloud is at the moment the safest, but Twitch has the best audience. So um, that's what I would say, Mixcloud and Twitch. That is where you should be at. So big time, it's not even a big delay. It's just at, when I get a question and I talk and I spend a couple of minutes, the chat goes on. So when I get to the next question, of course, I'll be behind. But that's what I say every time. That's it will happen. So, I mean, I can scroll up. It's it's now nine, um, nine, six over here, p.m. And I can see and Twitch is free. That's the comment by uh, Magic BB and J Style Sounds just posted one now. But that's not where I'm at, because anytime I answer questions, I have to then continue. So I'm at least uh, I'm, I'm 20 minutes behind. Yes. And there's nothing really I can do about that. Or I would just have to uh, skip, every, just read every question and then just scroll on. Um, uh, so I see that I actually just answered Gain Bond's question. Um, so it's, it's, it's almost 10 past 9. So a little bit past 9 p.m. over here in Amsterdam. Uh, call Miguel. They have so, I have so many I need to get out of my collection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making them smaller could be a good thing. Definitely. All right. Shorty from Philly in the building. Salute to you. Christopher again. Let's see. I mean, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Best yet. All right. Yeah, Vess, I said it in the beginning. I would try to keep up, but hey, as soon as you start answering questions, it's actually not realistic for me to think I can keep up. Yeah. Therese, salute to you. <laughs> no checkmate says, do you feel cold when you shave? What, you mean like when I shave and go outside? No, 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 no. I've been uh, used to it for too long. Mr. Music, salute to you. Have you noticed that you can't rate tracks directly from the CDJ 3000? Um, no, I haven't tested that yet. Uh, I mean, I'm, I'm going to be testing them more uh, severely in the coming uh, week. Dodge Danger says, I'm in Texas. We have mask requirements. Uh, yeah, same over here. But everything is closed. Um uh, I mean, it's still weird to me that some places are open when there's still so many uh, uh, in, in infections, infected people, even though I see that the vaccinations there are, are speeding up now. But um, yeah. Uh, Philip, I wonder if the sound alerts still work when the camera is blanked. Uh, I currently have no sound alerts uh, or I would have to stay on the Twitch window. Because I'm not streaming through OBS, I'm streaming um, on my Ata Mini Pro right here in this little office, and I'm looking at the Restream app, the the chat app. So I'm just seeing the chat, not seeing the window, not seeing any of the uh, um, other things. Like my normal overlays aren't here either. Styles Johnson was good, was good. Um, Ryan says, have you ever been to an expo? Um, yeah, plenty here in the Netherlands, but but um, not in the last two years. Got to have a warm-up crate to get comfortable. Warm-up crate is, um, J-Styles is, is a good thing to have, depending on what gig you have. Um, so if you're opening up for an act, most likely it is, it might be the warm-up phase, but if you're the DJ right before the act, then the party might have been, or the event might have been going on a little bit longer and then maybe you have to start actually with a little bit more energy um so i don't know all right dj Ma uh, magic bb what do i say when i play uh, when i say freestyle when i hear freestyle i think of the genre um, 
Stevie B, Johnny O, Judy Torres. Wow, I don't even know what that, uh, um, who those artists are right now and what that would mean as a genre. Uh, so when I say freestyle as a DJ, I mean that you do not have a prepared set. I play without a prepared playlist, track list. I might just select like a bunch of songs that I would like to play during an event. But then I also have all of my other folders with songs. But I go out and I start playing and I just look at the crowd's reaction, listen to the crowd's reaction. That's going to dictate which way I take it. So nothing prepared. That's what freestyle means. Uh, what my definition of freestyle is for DJing. So no prepared stuff. Uh, I use playlists in order to remember certain songs and to play stuff I don't usually play. I tend to start building a list a few days prior to a gig while the cuts are still fresh in my mind. Sometimes when you're at a gig, there uh, might be too much going on to remember. I uh, 100% agree you will, like, you could think of a track a week earlier, like, hey, that would be dope to play. Uh, and you will most likely forget about that um, once you're in the mix and busy. That happens a lot. So, yes. Um, I agree that 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 can happen a lot of times. Uh, one song you should listen to is "Peace of Your Heart" by Medusa, Medusa, and Good Boys. Okay, what's good? Dutchy here, singular. What up? Thanks for all your work in the Dutch hip hop scene. I'm a '90s kid, so Brain Power was played a lot. Okay, then all the dope to order. We're working on new stuff right now, actually. Wanna say that? A Pintos, I see you, salute. Bibom Kabom, I'm a newbie, I want to learn to scratch. And EDM2, which controller should I prefer, Numark or Pioneer? Uh, both. Really simple, if you're looking for a controller, you need to think of what you would like to have. So you have a budget and then you find out what you can get in that range. Now Numark and Pioneer both offer a great selection of controllers from entry level to mid tier to top tier so think of what it is that you actually need if you're first starting out um you probably want to go for a basic controller now you can't learn basic scratches on a basic controller as well so that's uh not a problem but uh i can't really i can't really point you to anything sp specific without knowing a lot more facts dj king what up Uh, here in the USA, freestyle is a genre very popular with us old folks. <laughs> okay. I mean, I've heard that before. Um, but yeah, I'm just not familiar with it like that. I mean, you have freestyle in all sorts of ways. But normally, in most cases, freestyle will mean not prepared. Like in dancing, I, I DJ at a dance battle every year. They have categories as well. They have like hip hop and house. And then they also have freestyle, meaning that the dancers can basically do whatever. And most likely it will turn into a combo of, of everything. Yeah. Uh, just in time, what's going on? Have you spent any time in the trance scene in the Netherlands or do you stick with hip hop mostly? Uh, I know there's a lot of big names living there for that scene. Uh, no, no time at all. Like it's, it's not my music. Um, I know, I know a, a, a bunch of house DJs from different house genres in the Netherlands. Of course, it's a small country. Um, but for me, it's always been hip hop, R&B, and then hip hop, R&B, dance hall, uh, new jack swing, two step, uh, UK garage, you name it. But not like like trance or I mean, I like dubstep, but like the trance and techno stuff, that's never been my thing. And I understand those are different genres, trance and techno. But I'm just saying, like a lot of those house genres have just never been um, my thing. DJ Herman, what up? Or if you're Dutch, it's Herman. Salute to you. Do, uh, do I know any rock DJs? Uh, no, actually, no. No. I mean, I know DJs who can uh, who can mix it up. So uh, DJ I know called Kid Cut Up. He is the, or was, I mean, they're not touring now. But for like, uh, like a year ago, he was the tour DJ for Pink for like over a year toured the entire world he did stadiums everywhere and he opened up for pink and he would do like a mixture of rock hip-hop and then blend in some whatever pop r&b but he would really make it a mashup of all of that but i don't know like any specific like rock dj 
All right, Herman. From PR. All right, salute to you. So yeah, man, it's actually 916 and I'm at the final uh, post. So I did catch up again. But that's the thing. Sometimes I'm on time with the chat, but then there's like all of a sudden you get like this combo of like four or five questions that all take some time and then I'll run behind again. <laughs> Jazzy Lamel says, I've noticed that when some DJs go Facebook Live, their numbers are only four or five people watching. That means to me that the live set is not good or nobody's interested. Would you agree? No, I uh, totally, totally disagree. Um, I'm not going to take Facebook as an example because I'm not there, but let's just say Twitch because a lot of DJs are on Twitch right now. A lot of people are on Twitch right now. We can even take it beyond DJing and just look at overall people streaming on Twitch because most of the people on Twitch are gamers, of course. It's really hard to gain an audience. It is. There's a lot of people streaming on Twitch right now. Games, especially more popular games. If you scroll, if you take one of the popular games right now, you'll get the list of people that are streaming that game right now. If you scroll all the way down, you're going to get incredible amounts of people that have zero viewers then you get a lot of people with like one maybe two it's hard to actually have a nice size audience um when you're streaming unless you start to really uh build that up you will start out with like almost nothing and that's um that does not have anything to do with the fact that you're um not good now mind you there could be terrible djs in there as well but that's not the main reason why you don't see a lot of viewers so for some it might be that there's just they still need to build that up and just gain a following it might be a wrong time again with twitch you're dealing with the discoverability so if 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 you get on twitch um, and you get on that main page, like the top part of it will be the, the DJs with a couple more. So I might get a couple of DJs suggested. If I go on there now, they'll suggest a couple of DJs and they're suggesting DJs with like 300 viewers and 500 and one has two and a half thousand viewers. Um, but you can go into a category and there's going to be a bunch of people that have like hardly anyone there. That is going to happen. Um, and it doesn't mean that they're going to be terrible, uh, terrible DJs. I mean, the discoverability is still a, a, little, a little bit tricky on Twitch as well. Um, but numbers aren't that great. You, it's, if you have 100 people watching, then you have a great size audience already. Like that's that's actually quite a lot. And there's people with a lot more, but those people should not be like the, the, the reference point because there's plenty of people on here that have hardly anyone watching. Uh, so you really, really need to build that. And that can take time. That can take serious time. Uh, how often do you find CDJ setups with bad link connection? I've heard of people saying to bring two or four USBs to the club because of this. Wasn't sure if this actually uh, happens. I'm pretty sure that it can happen. Uh, I honestly haven't had issues with that when I play with CDJs. Now, that's not my main thing, but especially when I do like uh, my brain power gigs, when I play with him and we're doing club shows, then we're coming into clubs. Those clubs have CDJs. I'm not bringing an entire setup, so I'll come in with a flash drive. And up until this point, I've been able to do it with one flash drive every time, but I will have a spare flash drive in my bag just in case. So if I need to have two, I'll have them there. So it's always a good idea to do that. And let's be honest, if you only have to bring headphones and a flash drive, it's not that big of a deal to bring like two. Like if someone is playing with four players, then they have to bring four, but not a lot of DJs actually do that. You see the setup with like three and four players a lot of times. Not a lot of DJs actually use that though. Um, uh, Liz. I'm not sure if everyone took their daily dump. And I'll take it a step further than that. Some people take more than one a day. 
Risky, what's good? And Ryan wants to know what's the best way to build a fan base? To start streaming and stream consistently. You have to be out there. You have to do it. <laughs> That's the thing. You have to do it. Um, so uh, Herman says you have to uh, share your profile to everyone and create a post with your uh, Twitch link and keep posting nice flyers with the links you want people to visit. Um, so yes, but you have to be careful with just share your profile to everyone. Um, the way you go about that, like the best thing to do is to actually engage with people online. So don't just go into any random chat and just be like, hey, I'm a DJ. This is my channel. That's not going to work. Um, but for instance, if you see DJs who play this kind of stuff you play, you can definitely jump in the chat and just be active in that chat. Leave some dope comments. Don't even start to promote yourself yet, but just be active so people start to see your name. Um, because if you're just going to be the spammy type that's in there, you're like, Hey guys, come check my channel. Like most people aren't going to, going to check that. Um, yes, posting flyers to promote yourself, but you got to be consistent. You can't just stream once every two, three weeks. And then after four times be like, Hey man, I still don't have an audience because that's just not going to work. Every time I do a mixed stream, I have new people coming in who say like, Hey, I didn't know you were on Twitch. And... I've been streaming consistently now for months and I don't do a lot of days a week. So even if I do it like once a week, it takes time. Now I was able to gather a following because I have followings on other platforms. So that helped me to grow a little bit faster. But even now I can see like every week, a couple of new followers come in. And I've also seen colleagues of mine who stream five, six, or even seven days a week, and they've grown a lot faster. So the consistency, the consistency is, is, is so important. So again, DJ Mani, like, like, like I was talking about earlier, um, he's streaming. Like, I think it is like six days a week. Maybe it's seven. I mean, there's not a day that I don't get an email saying DJ Mani is live now. And yeah, there we go. Just clicked on, and the first name I see, I think he just started live again. So he's playing every single day almost, or at least six days a week. And he's been doing that for the last year, I think. And that has helped him to grow. He, he now has like 4,500 followers, and I think he made partner. But that took time that took a lot of time to do i see cleveland terry doing the same thing like he's there like five days a week at least um he's also in a phase where i see that he's doing a lot of those um um raid um raid parties where you have like a flyer and you see like it's a party from i don't know one till one and you have like 12 djs playing all after each other and they all raid each other on to the next uh, so he's connecting with a lot of people and I see him in more of those streams that can help you to uh, uh, expand and grow your base. But that takes time and it's not easy to stream like like what Cleveland Terry is doing. That's not easy. That is not easy at all, especially with the guests. And I mean, he does have to do editorial work to prepare. I mean, I don't know how much research he does into every guest, but it's not like a 100% freestyle thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure of that. But that takes a lot of work. He has to set that up to have all of those guests. Then he has to go on with those guests. And he does a lot of streams where it's just him talking. Then he's also mixing. Mojax is doing the same thing. Like he grew uh, as well. But that took time. And he's doing a lot of streams. He started out with like one or two a week. I think he's doing like four or something. I don't know. I see him stream all the time. So that's the thing. You, you have to go out there. You have to do. And you have to be consistent. And then growth can happen. For me, it's actually a little bit difficult as well or different as well because I do different things. So if I was doing like two or three mixes a week, uh, I could probably grow a certain audience maybe a little bit faster. But since I'm doing a stream like this, so maybe some people see me today, they're not interested in hearing me talk about DJing. 
So they'll skip this channel because maybe they'll think, like, okay, so that's a DJ who only talks. Um, so doing multiple things can actually be confusing for people, but this is what I do. This is my platform. I use it for all of those things, but it's going to take time. It takes time to grow. Um, yeah. Uh, did you ever use a green screen while streaming a set? Uh, Maxim, not yet. So I've done green screen, st uh, green screen stuff in the past for my YouTube channel. And it's something that has been on my mind. So I have a green screen, so I can do it. And I most likely will uh, do that for maybe a different type of stream or maybe if I'm doing a special theme. Um, but I will do it, yes. Yeah, Herman, no doubt. Like the, the, the spammy stuff is, is, is uh, I mean, I'm not even going to say it's terrible, but um, if I see it on YouTube and places like that, like, hey, check my channel. Like, I've never felt like, oh, let me check that channel because someone said check my channel. I've never done that. But if you see people in a chat or in the comments and they're giving their opinion or they're sharing something that's actually like of value or you can hear by the way they comment on songs that they're into something or they know something about it, that might lead you to say like, hey, let me check what this person is about. Uh, have you had a chance to play on the DJ MV10? No, no, I haven't played on it yet. You think this will become a club standard install uh, because of the additional features? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I mean, I, I don't think there, I don't know if there's a ton of people who really would take advantage of that. Like a lot of those club DJs are just happy with the setup that's there. And I don't think they even take the time. I'm not saying most DJs, but I know a lot of DJs that aren't really into gear like that. I don't even know if they're going to take the time to see what that actually could do. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's going to be a club standard. Uh, okay, I see, I see, I see Dodge Danger reacting to someone, to Christopher, but I didn't, s okay, if I can DJ like DJ Coco, uh, at home for fun by myself, I can die happy. Yes. So Dodge Danger, I don't, I, I, I'm assuming here, but I don't think Christopher means literally play exactly like that DJ or play what that DJ is playing. But I think more or less like the style that he has. So, and I'm, there's nothing wrong with like liking a style a certain DJ has. And even if you have a similar style, if you have your own song selection, that will still create your own uh, identity. And um, if I th think I understand who he's talking about, uh, yeah, Coco uh, uh, Shimokita is is dope. If if I'm thinking of the same DJ, uh, the Japanese DJ who plays all vinyl, right? Like <laughs> that guy is super dope. Um, and he's saying it not even as for a career, but just at home by himself, just the way he plays, because he has a really dope way of playing. So I understand uh, what you're talking about. Yeah, man, <laughs> he's super dope. Mm, Ryan Waldron wants to know best speakers for gigs when it comes to beginner DJs, brand what, and I think, uh, and thanks, I'm looking for some I can use in the future. Though that I don't know. I have no knowledge of speakers. And I mean, if, if uh, so wait, so you're a beginner DJ, you're just looking for speakers to have in the house, right? Or are you talking about speakers that you want to take to gigs? Oh no, sorry, you said it, best speaker for gigs. No idea. That is something I'm so not used to. Aha, Lauzin says, recommend, recommend TLM show on Monday, especially the last Monday of the month. Yeah, man, the, the 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 vinyl show was a lot of fun again. Um, not prepared, but yes, I do want to get to a point where I can really take the time to go to my wall and really look for all of these songs that I would like to play. But even now, when I was going through the wall on the fly, I still found like so many songs that I haven't heard in a long time. Love it. Um. Griefu Runk says, could you gift me a CDJ 800, please? How? 
I don't have a CDJ 800. And if I had one, I would probably want to keep that, but I don't have that. So uh, I cannot help you there, Griffo. What is making that noise? Is that the laptop? Wow, okay. So yeah, like Herman says, Ryan, you should probably just go to something like a guitar center and check out speakers. I don't know if the stores are open, like we're on lockdown. I can't currently do stuff like that here. Um, but there's also probably some valuable information you can find online if you look for what you're looking for. I just know very little about speakers for gigs. All right, guys, if you have some questions, just just drop them in the chat right now um, because I'm not going to make the stream too long. I haven't even eaten yet. <laughs> So let me see what's going on here. I'm gonna test something real quick. I don't know if that actually works, if I can connect to, uh, I'm gonna connect to my GoPro through the phone while I'm actually already using it for the stream. Does that work? Will it allow me to do that? I'm going to see what's going to happen now. DJ Gizmo, are you taking open questions? Yeah, that, that's what this is all about. The, the SDK Live on Wednesday is just all about talking about DJ stuff. So any DJ related questions uh, are welcome. Um, anything. Uh, oh, I forgot one. Any experience in DJing jazz music uh, thoughts? Um, very little. So there's been gigs where I was able to like 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 bringing bring in like something like a jazz song, but then it would be like a jazz song, like like not like playing a jazz set or something, and that would be pretty difficult to to. That's gonna be a totally different DJ style compared to playing like hip hop R and B. Like even if you're playing like soul and funk, there's still more of a structure to it compared to a lot of jazz where it can be really open and free. So. Um, no, not a lot of experience with that. Justin Town wants to know what are your preferred headphones for the clubs versus the studio? So for the clubs, for the longest time I used the Sennheiser AC25. Um, still love those, just currently don't have a working pair. And I've been using the ACJ2000 Mark II by Pioneer for a very long time as well. So those are my preferred. For when it comes to the studio, if I use headphones in the studio, most of the times I'm using my AKG Q701, the Quincy Jones edition. Um, I also have a couple of other AKG headphones that I had to test, but the Quincy's are the ones I will fall back to uh, a lot. miss anything no, okay there. uh do you see twitch programming going downhill with dmcas uh for the moment not yet we'll have to see where that goes it's hard to tell like I, i've been talking about my mixcloud for 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 some time as well like um a lot of us are aware of mixcloud i i do my streams on mixcloud as well um but twitch is still where it's going down now where, where it's happening um, so some streamers really had issues with DMCA's, even if they deleted the streams, but they just had clips, then they still got in trouble. Uh, I, I, I haven't talked to a lot of DJs who've gotten in trouble on Twitch. It's basically just the replays that get muted. Um, look, once we start to see like a lot of DJs actually losing channels and stuff like that, then I think DJs will start to look, uh, at other places. But for now, I don't think... It's an issue yet. Uh, Ali Boy wants to know, how do you think Twitch following will play a part in new DJs uh, being able to charge a premium after COVID is over and clubs reopen? Um, yeah, that's tricky. I mean, just imagine this. If I'm, I'm here in Amsterdam, I'm here in the Netherlands, 
um, let's just let's just say that I continue to grow on Twitch, for instance, and I have more followers and more plays. None of that helps out a local club because most of my viewers are not from the Netherlands and are not from Amsterdam. So I could have let's let's just say I have numbers that are ten times higher than they are now. So the video is frozen, really. Oh wow, I see. The video is frozen. Is the audio still going though? You still got me on audio, guys? Hey, that's weird. Why is that happening? My streaming monitor is telling me, let me see, let me see, let me see what's happening here. Okay, it's telling me I'm still on air. Uh, I can see that I'm uh, I'm frozen. Whoa. How did that happen? The audio is still there? Why though? I'm on wired internet and I see nothing in my uh, stream, uh, my streaming monitor. Everything looks A-OK -okay over here, except for the frozen uh, screen. Okay, maybe that'll come back in a sec. I have no idea why that happened. So let me go back to, um, let me go back here. Um, so yeah, like I was saying, you could have a following online, but um, if online doesn't translate to people buying a ticket to come to the club, then you cannot start to charge a premium. So uh, I think that really depends on it. Now, if you grow a crowd on Twitch that is actually in your area, then that would also mean that those people would love to come check you out once you get to play in the club again. So that is what that really um, depends on. Uh -huh. Mo Berry says, Candy Duffer. You probably mean Candy Dolfer? My home girl. Uh, Griffu says, how can ask for club gig professionally? Uh, how do you mean, bro? Let me know how you mean that question. Yeah, I think the video is frozen everywhere. I do not understand how that happened. Let me try to fade to black for a second and come back. So why is this telling me it's on 25 minutes? So something happened here. That is weird. Weird, weird, weird. Yeah, it's still frozen. I don't know why. Last time we had that, it was the Wi-Fi, but now I'm not on Wi-Fi, so we should not be dealing with this. All right, whatever. I'm going to finish some questions, and then we got to get them. Uh, DJ Herman says, I think when you try to set up the camera to your phone, yeah, but the, the thing is that the, uh, the only thing, oh, you're actually right. Like the, the, the stream is not frozen. I think you're correct, bro. Thank you. Because I started to look at questions again and I never got to, uh, that. Let me see, because I actually never linked the phone. It started to connect, but it didn't connect. Uh, let me take that out. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Because I don't want to turn the phone, uh, the, the camera off because last time that caused the stream to stop. I'll see if I react. All right, I'm just going to go back to the questions. and uh, Because last time I did something to the cam, the stream just uh, stopped working. So I don't want to do that. Yeah, Vess, we're turning this into Clubhouse right now. <laughs> yeah, the cam is still on in front of me. So I'm, I'm just going to click off for a second. That also means you're going to lose the audio. So give me a minute. Let's see what happens.
Well, that didn't work. Or let me put it like this. I just ended the stream and turned it back on. <laughs> Let's see how many come back. Uh, just because I don't want to end the stream like that. So uh, I actually just hit off air and on air on the Atom Mini Pro. So uh, that should have brought it back everywhere. So yeah, just want to get back to the, the last couple of questions. So um, um, yeah, Moberry, Moberry uh, uh, Candy Dolphin for a jazz set. Yeah, that could work. Love Candy. Right here out of the Netherlands. Uh huh. So yeah, Griffo, that's the question. That's that's the, the difficulty difficulty with a question like like that. I think Dodge Danger has an answer for you here. It depends on the venue. Some venues utilize bookings and they will curate an opening list. Uh, so it becomes difficult. Bars and smaller clubs are different. So yeah, first off, you have to see like like what what kind of venue would fit your uh, your style of playing, and then you um, you need to start networking there as well. Like asking for club gigs, like like you need to make sure you know the promoters, know the owners of the venues, the DJs, um, connect with all of those people. At the same time, you should try to build try to build a fan base by getting like mixes out there, letting people find you online as well. Um, it's a combo of a lot of things. So it's not that easy to answer. And Ryan, what you're asking is also something that is not something people should tell you. That's something you should know while you're playing. So you should, you, you just ask, when should you drop the bangers? First off, it depends on what slot are you playing? Have you been booked to do the warm up? Because then bangers are not your thing to play. Um, are you booked to play prime time? So is it your job to play during the hypest part of the evening? Because then it's going to be like almost all bangers. So that really depends on that. If you're somewhere in the middle, so you're not the first DJ, but you're playing a little bit later when the energy is starting to go up, then you have to feel out what's happening. Do we have enough people in the venue already? What's the vibe like? You start to increase the energy a little bit. When you see that it's working and you got enough people going for it and it's the right time. So it's it's starting to get to that point where you can actually do that. Then you can start to play with more energy. Like you do not want to be the DJ who's warming up. And just because you want to prove yourself, you want to start playing like bangers when it's totally not that time because either... The club is not filled yet or it's just totally not that time yet and you got djs that have been booked to play during that prime time and I, look i've had this happen plenty of times when i came into a venue and you had like the warm-up dj or the engineer of the club who also plays the first hour and you come in and they're playing like a bunch of party breaks and current hits and you're just looking at the dude like why though why because they feel that's the way to prove themselves, even though there were like only 10 people at, in the venue at that time. Um, and that's not even what you're supposed to be playing. Kayo, I want to see you out of this stream in like two seconds, bro. This is not your time to be on here yet. Otherwise, I'm going to step out of this little office and... But anyway, so... Those are things, there's no rule. Like you start playing the bangers at 12 o'clock or, you know, that's, that's just not how it goes. Um, so like Dodge Danger also says, if you play bangers, you won't be invited back if it's not your slot. So if you start to do that when it's totally not that time yet, it could have consequences as well. So, uh, yeah, I've been in that situation so many times that people just start to play what they're not supposed to play. Now, luckily... It doesn't um, scare me because I know there's plenty of DJs out there that do play more of a prepared set and they have all of those hits in there. And when they hear some other DJ play that, then they start to get nervous. Like, hey, he's playing what I was going to play. I don't really feel like that, even though I can just tell it, dude, this is the wrong energy to be sending out at this point. Um, so it really depends on the time, the room, your purpose for that night. If you should be playing bangers. 
So yeah, I'm gonna have to uh, almost end this because I gotta go check out my uh, my son to see what his new uh, hairstyle looks like. That's also an advantage during this pandemic for us. I don't need the barber. I have my razor and uh, wifey knows how to, um, yo, how to deal with their hair and do stuff with it. Yeah, I just check. I just saw the, the ethernet cable get yanked. So I think someone just tripped over that cable. I have a cable running throughout the entire house into this uh, office space right now. <laughs> All right, so for those who are new to this, I don't have my uh, OBS here. I'm doing this from the Ata Mini Pro, so I didn't have um, an end screen ready. You can catch me here every Monday with a mix show called Crates. Uh, I'll be back on Monday with that. Monday is going to be a new Beat Source Link edition. You can catch me here every Sunday with a show called Plugging In. That's just me sharing my screen, showing you what I'm working on. That could be editing videos. That could be making a new beat. That could be testing plugins. Uh, in this case, it might be me taking a look at engine and maybe doing some stuff with phase. We'll see. And um, I'm here every Wednesday. That's today for share the knowledge live. So I'm here every Monday, every Wednesday, every Sunday and twice a month. I do a mix show on Friday called Certified Bangers. So the next show is Sunday. And if you want to see me mix, that will be on Monday, right? So normally I have my end screen, my schedule on screen when I'm streaming through OBS. I don't have that option here right now, so I can't do that. Um, just make sure you follow me. If you follow me on uh, follow me on Instagram, DJTLM, then you'll uh, stay up to date. Uh, and if you're watching me from YouTube right now, make sure you go follow me on Twitch or Mixcloud because the mix streams, I don't do those on YouTube due to the copyright issues. So uh, normally I'll start that mix stream on YouTube just to let you know, okay, I'm going live right now, but then I turn it off again. So you have to be on Mixcloud or on Twitch. So come check me out there. And for DJ questions, I'm here every Wednesday. So come check me out. All right. That's it for now. Uh, salute to all of you from all over the globe for tuning in again. I truly appreciate that. I hope I was able to add some value to your uh, morning, uh, afternoon, or evening. And um, yes, I'll be back uh, soon. Peace, guys.